Right. I uh, guess we better get on with it then. So welcome back to another Vector 3D live stream. In fact, is this the first actual Vector 3D live stream? I think it is. So today we've got this main thing, which we're going to be looking at in a bit. But first, I just want to go over this package, which I got yesterday, which is some filament. So if you have not seen before, uh, Rushmere 3D is a fairly new filament and printer shop in the UK. So I picked up some filament from them. So they kind of do, well, as of very recently, filament that's kind of harder to get a lot of places. So, well, harder to get in the UK. So I picked up some 3D filament, just black and white, and also, more specifically, polyalchemy, which does seem to be rather difficult to get in the UK, like very difficult. So this is the first time I've ever had some polyalchemy. So this is like a really kind of bright, glossy, pinky colour, which looks very delicious. So it's not sponsored or anything. I just thought it'd be nice to mention that. So. Rushmere 3D from Jay, if you're not seen on Twitter, then I suggest you go find that. So that pretty much covers that first quick bit. Hello everyone, and thank you very much, of course, for joining me. Is the sound a bit low? I can boost the sound a little bit. I think I'm gonna start peaking if it goes any louder, so I think it might be you. Uh, cool. Oh, look. Jay's in the chat. Rushmere 3D. So if you have any questions about his filament that's just been released, then by all means, ask away. As I said, not sponsored or anything. I just thought it'd be nice to mention. So there you go. Uh, also, of course, I did TCT recently. So that was a fairly big event. It was pretty busy. There's some videos on the channel, if you've not seen those already. Some interviews of uh, E3D about the new Hermes which seemed very popular. I think that's going to be a really nice piece of kit for less than £100, everything included. Should be nice. And then, of course, I talked to Stratasys and who else did I talk to? Duet 3D. And there was one more, which I can't remember off the top of my head. So if you've not seen that already, go take a look at that at some point too. Right. I guess we'd better get on with it. So, of course, thank you for joining me midweek here. I don't normally do midweek streams, but I wanted to kind of get this out the box as soon as possible. And to be honest, it's taken me ages just to get hold of it because a box this size and coming from internationally uh, took a little while and they wouldn't deliver it unless I was at home. So that was a bit of a problem. I ended up having to drive for an hour to go and pick it up. Well, an hour there pick up the parcel, which takes like 30 seconds, and then an hour to get back. And it was upon picking up the parcel that I realized quite how heavy it was. As you can see on the box, 20 kilos. That was a bit of a surprise. I thought this is gonna be easy, a light kind of a small printer. Turns out a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. Obviously, four kilos is like packing weight, 16 kilos is the net weight. I think the actual printer, as of like 10 minutes ago when I checked, is actually 15 kilos and there's one kilo of filament, and that's your net weight, NW, of 16 kilos. So I've not actually opened it at all yet. Everything is still totally sealed, so I'm gonna to be totally new to anything that's going on here, as much as you are. Chat's all really small, I wish I had, oh, can I just zoom in to chat, just to make it a little bit easier to see? Nope, that didn't work particularly well. Uh, so there was no import taxes to be paid because it came from within Europe. So you won't pay import tax if it's outside Europe. One of the great things about the EU. Anyway, <laughs> single market and all that kind of stuff. So this is a printer from Monoprice. Uh, I did mention on Twitter fairly recently-ish that I was talking to them about trying to get a review unit and they basically flat out refused to do anything. They're like, we don't do review units. I was like, well, thank you very much. Stop, read this before unpackaging your printer. 
that's a fairly do not return to the seller you purchased from which was monoprice if you are having trouble contact monoprice technical support okie dokie i suppose they think people are going to have issues with this that don't know anything about 3d printing so they should just get help which i suppose is not totally wrong <laughs> so it's going to be actually pretty difficult to get this all out the box got this is this filament this is filament half a kilo of pla it's probably going to be really very nothing special probably a really off-white cheapy natural pla hmm. no idea what the quality or tolerance is going to be like but that's some white pla also, we've got in here, hopefully, oh, a very glossy instruction manual. I looked at that online, so I know a little bit about that already. If you have any questions at any point, obviously, just go ahead and ask. And then we've got a box of accessories, which is micro SD card, SD card adapter, metal scraper. Oh, that doesn't bode well. Uh, USB cable, switch cable, motor cable, set of Allen keys, yellow tape, spanner, water bottle, glue stick, user manual, US, EU and UK power cord, and a filament hook. Originally, filament hook is a spool holder. So it's all fairly well packaged in here. Let's see if we can do... That's what it looks like. I'd say that's pretty good. It's all this kind of closed cell phone, so multiple contacts packed fairly well. It looks pretty sturdy. Although I think this stuff is not recyclable, which is not good, but you can't win everything. Sorry about the wobbly camera. Yes. Earth looks like it was very good. I did want to go, but it's just quite expensive to get over there. So not this year for me. Hopefully next year. Uh, more packaging. Hmm. Oh, blimey. 16 kilos doesn't sound that heavy, but when you try and lift it at an awkward angle, suddenly it feels quite a lot heavier. Uh, uh, it's actually quite small once you get out of the box. <laughs> right, let's just uh, sort this stuff quickly. Right, so if you haven't already guessed, this is the Monoprice Ultimate 2. There was an Ultimate 1, but this is more Ultimate than that one, by a factor of 2. I think that's just weird, rummaging, rummaging off the packaging. So, as I unpack it, let's go through some of the specs. So the build volume inside is uh, 200 by 150 by 150. I don't actually know which way around that is. I don't know if the 200 is vertical. I don't know what. It looks like the bed is 200 by 150 and then another 150 high. But I'll have to confirm that when I start printing. Uh, obviously fully enclosed all I'm not sure if it's I'm not sure if it's steel or aluminium I think it's steel given the weight not totally certain uh, uh. That's got to be the least 
careful packaging removal. Uh, what else have we got? So the maximum nozzle temperature is 250, so presumably it's a PTFE lined hot end, which is maybe not the best, but uh, one of the reasons I want to get this is to be potentially something that I can upgrade to a higher temperature enclosed printer. So that nozzle and extruder, I'll be looking at ways to improve that when I can. This is really odd. Is the plastic on the inside or the outside? Inside. The uh, the door has a uh, kind of a security switch on it, a safety switch. It's probably a better way of putting it, so that you can have the option to pause the printer if the door gets opened while running. Don't know how quickly that will pause, so that'll be interesting to check. Uh -huh. So price-wise, I, I paid £400. I think that was including delivery. I'm not sure. I think it was free delivery. So that was not too bad. The normal price, if you like, is 500 I believe now, if you go and look on their website, I looked just earlier today, it was 425 So the deal is not quite as low as when I purchased it, but still not too bad at all. Looks like you're filmed in 16 by 9 and stream in 4 by 3. It must be something you're in because I'm 100% streaming 16 by 9 and I don't have any settings for changing the ratio. Uh, yes, this is a monoprice printer, monoprice logo. For those who may be in the US, what is it? It's early in the morning in the US, isn't it? Uh, or is it late? I always forget which way around it is. Uh, but monoprice is not a particularly common brand here. We don't really... Like, this is the first monoprice thing I've ever bought. But apparently, I think it's more popular in the US. So, if you're interested, wondering why monoprice is something different for me, that's why. These are actually... I don't know if I've set up shortcuts for these camera bits, but let's uh, bring this in here. So, again, apologies for all the wobbling. But this is the, it's just a temporary support to hold the whole carriage in place. Well, it doesn't hold the carriage, it holds like the, the axis in place. But these are all like properly bolted on. I did take a piece of foam out the side that was jammed in there. So that was all holding that in place. A little bit interesting. Fairly well securely packaged. They obviously intend to, to uh, arrive in one place. Yeah, um, temperature on the nozzle is a bit low. I mean, realistically, is that a mass? Well, that didn't fit particularly well. Maybe this is because of these all fitting in here. I uh, don't know if that's going to be a massive deal in the long run. Uh, oh, come on. That's not particularly easy to remove. Let's see if there's something in the toolbox. If there's not something in the toolbox to do this, that is mental bananas. Okie dokie, looks like there is, sort of. That is the jankiest looking card reader I've ever seen. Uh, so, just got to try and get into this hole. Oh, this is this is silly, isn't it? This is silly. Let me just gonna come around the other side, see if I can get a better. Oh, look, you can see the little red switch in the front there. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> right, I'm not using the silly little allen key.
wrong size. Yeah, the screen is probably also another disappointing factor, but it depends what the viewing angles are like, I suppose, how much it's needed, how easy it is to actually find the settings you want. But yeah, I, I tend to agree that it's not, not pointing in the best direction. It's normally nice to have it pointing upwards a bit. Ugh. Oh, that's that gone. So that's that single use screw used. Sorry, probably scratched the mic then. Uh, right. Okay. So those are just two injection molded parts. They've paid for injection molding parts just to hold the carriage. That seems absolutely mental. I guess they hope to have sold loads of these. I've not seen many of them around, so I don't know if they did. Was that in the box? I think it must have been. Tape, oh golly, it's a tape bed. Well, you can't win them all, eh? Okay, let's just not look at that right now. Uh, Use a guide. Let's see if we can. Don't know if that's going to refocus and be decent at all or not. So, gives you kind of overview of the menu system. I think this is exactly the same as what's available on the website slicing software. One thing I was interested in is whether there's, because uh, I'm presuming this is running a version of Marlin. It might not be, I might be wrong, but that was my current assumption. In which case, do they provide the source code for their firmware? Which they should, of course, be doing. Uh, didn't actually say in that guide what to do next. Hopefully this quick start died does. Open the box and remove the printer from the protective foam. Set it on a flat, stable surface, then remove the plastic. Use a pair of scissors or side cutters to remove the zip ties, zip ties and silicon rubber sheets on the Z axis. So there's some components down there. Right. Mic connector's cutting out. Sorry about that. Hello, hello. Yeah, sorry, I think it was just me hugging the printer by accident and hitting the mic on the uh, side of it. So It's kind of nice, actually, that they're using bright yellow zip ties. Like, it doesn't seem like anything particularly special, but for new users that are looking to get a 3D printer and not too sure what they should be cutting, what they shouldn't, it just makes it obvious that these bright yellow ones are the ones you need to remove. Because there are other black zip ties in the machine, which are there for um, cable management. I'm presuming it's for cable management. Well, it, it's cable managed. Yep, of course it is. Uh, so that means these can come off. These are weird. 
bits of silicon rubber. Sorry, this old camera is a little bit garbage actually, isn't it? It's not the best quality. Uh, right. So the, the bed is a heated bed as far as I know, and it is a uh, removable glass plate. I mean, being removable and glass in my mind is not particularly special and not well it's also not that useful it's not like a spring steel where because you're removing it you can also then flex it because glass generally not that flexible a quick warning message here about the voltage of the printer Please select the proper input voltage for your region and check the input voltage before powering on the product to avoid damage. It doesn't actually say how one goes about doing that. There are no instructions on here. It's just a warning. It's just, oh my god, everyone panic! What do we do? Don't know. <laughs> so that's there. I guess now we have a look for this voltage switch. I'm also tempted to open the bottom of the printer and see if I can find where the control board is and have a look at that before we go about turning anything on too. Yes, it is indeed the Monoprice Ultimate. Oh, it's right here. Look. Uh, another big yellow sticker. Please select the pre... Can't read upside down. Proper input voltage for your region. La -da 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 -da. It's currently set on 230 volts. Oh, I was doing so well. It's actually not a too sticky sticker, so it should all come off fairly easily. I do hate it when they use like stickers that are almost impossible to remove. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. So, I mean, a couple of you have noticed so far there are some features like the lower temperature hot end that's like not really that impressive for the price. But the reason I thought this was interesting is that it it has an enclosure like a proper enclosure it's a steel solid frame like proper heavy proper rigid so while staying at a reasonable price i mean 400 fairly expensive i suppose compared to the very cheap printers you can get but there is some significant cost that goes into a a proper frame i'm expecting safety features wise like proper electrical like it's difficult for me to prod really show this because it's so dark inside the printer but everything is like properly cable managed which shouldn't be a surprise but it's nice that it is let's see if i can show that so it's pointed with a yellow zip tie there's a cable that runs all the way down in the corner here and it's properly wrapped it's zip tied it's out the way there's no movement there's no strain it's just properly managed which is like for really cheap printers, yeah, I'm pretty sure you just don't get. So that's kind of nice. So yeah, the, the, the thinking behind it was you, what you lose in features, you hopefully gain a little bit in quality. And I think some people, myself included, are starting to get a little bit fed up with really slightly below acceptable quality printers that are very cheap, but not very good. So. I just wanted this to be something a little bit different. Um, hmm. This is not the easy thing I thought it might be. So the I can see the control board is over on this. Oh no, that's the what? The screen and control board are all one thing. It's not very easy to get to though, or is it? I don't think it's gonna be very easy to disassemble right now. Oh. 
It's actually quite warm doing this in front of the lights. Equally, I would be surprised if it wasn't properly cable managed, given that it's like a known brand company. But it is still a nice change from your classic Chinese printers, which are less than well managed. Yeah, I don't know how to get in this, really, to be honest. Because the back panel wraps inside of all the other ones and has loads of screws through it. The side panel has quite a few screws, although those ones are going to be side panel. I don't know what these extra ones are for. And it's got the power connector, so that's unlikely to be the panel. The whole... This whole panel, like the front and the sides, is all one single folded piece. So that would probably be the piece to remove. Maybe. But I really don't know. You might have to wait for the review for that, because I don't think... If, I, if I'm going to get something printing now... I don't think I'm also going to be able to do that. So let's try and get something printing. Hey, hello everyone, not from the UK. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, yes, yeah, so there are four screws that are different to the other ones. Yeah, so this one, this one, this one, and this one are clearly different. But I think that's, they have these like aggressively sharp washers, and I think that's all grounding for the frame. I think, I think, I think, I think. It just doesn't look. Should we give it a go? He wants me to give it a go and try and remove the bottom to see if the whole printer fall apart, falls apart, or if we access the controller and we can have a look at that. Oh, one thing I did mention, it is actually got auto bed leveling. So despite the fact that you a lot of the time lose features for getting other things, that's one thing that is retained. I really don't know. What's the... Open. Two votes for open and one for... Right, okay, we'll open it. Hopefully it won't take too long. Okie dokie. So, that's the wrong screw. The one thing I'm listening for is for like nuts and cables and stuff falling off the back as I remove the screws, because that would be a bad indication but it doesn't seem to be so looks like this may well be the last panel to go in which is what we're after here right now there's some more screws around the side let's stick that in there I think we might have got it just right. Yes, that's all moved. Da, 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 da. Right. <laughs> Okie dokie, so let's have a look inside. Piece by piece. So, power supply, 24 volts, 200 watts, quite low wattage, so bed heat up. It's quite small, so it should be maybe all right. 
wiring looks really properly well done there's no like dodgy connectors doesn't look like everything's properly in everything looks reasonably tight proper covered connectors for the power connector it is a mean well unit so it's not some weird dodgy knockoff it's proper clean power stepper motor for the uh, z-axis Everything got rotated in my head weird then. And then over this side we have uh, not a lot. The control board is definitely in there. So how are we going to do that? It needs to rest on its face. But doing that is going to be difficult. Mm. Aha! Let's rest it on these neat filament boxes I got earlier. Oh. So blimmin' heavy. Right, hopefully that's not putting any excess pressure on anything. Right, indeed, let's have a close up. So, sorry, did you want a close up as well? Let's see how close we can get this in here. Everything's all over the shop. What a mess. Looks like I've got some other cables to plug in. Right. See what we can determine from this. Uh, close up. It's not great focusing, is it, this one? It used to be really good. I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know if I can, maybe it's just, wow, that's incredibly blurry. Let's just see if I can. Oh, it's low resolution, that's probably why. It nearly had it there. Let's bring it up a little bit. Okay. Don't know what it's going to focus on. Anyway, I think we've got enough to uh, take a pokey around. So you probably can't read it, but this definitely says at mega 2560 so 8-bit board this looks like power input here 12 or 24 volts right down here you've got USB connection on the side so it's USB type A is it type A which is the no it's like the printery one uh, is this type B I forget this size this sort of shape yeah type B type B yeah thought so Right. <laughs> this down here definitely says Wi-Fi, so I don't know. There's some extra cables here, so maybe these are relevant to something. X, 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 X. I did kind of forget about the instructions. 
uh, remove the fixed support, remove the SD card from the accessory box, insert it into the card slot to the left of the display. Next, remove the included AC power cord, plug one end into the power socket, da -da -da -da. filament, filament in, sample. I don't know what the extra cables are for. What were they? Included in the box. Switch cable and motor cable. But it doesn't, doesn't tell you to plug them in. Why would they give you a switch cable and a motor cable just for funsies? Uh, so obviously there's heat sinks on the stepper driver, so I can't actually see what they are. Uh, I'm not going to be expecting anything too quiet. Uh, here you've obviously got your X min end stop and Y minimum end stop. Uh, not sure what the other ones are, probably uh, maybe thermistor heater and maybe another not totally sure until I know exactly where they're going it's difficult to, to identify what exactly is what and then you obviously got your LCD down the front which connected by that side and then a twisty clicky knob and this weird floating fan in the middle of nowhere that presumably was a bit of an afterthought and is used to cool the board hopefully that's not too loud what is nice actually while we're in here. Uh, you know, I was mentioning cable management. Spot on, as always. Down here, there's all these like extra cable tie spots. So, I mean, maybe you could improve it, or if you're going to modify it, there's extra space. There's quite a lot of uh, roomy space for cables down in there. Anyway, I think that's quite enough on that close up before we get too blurred. Uh, so yeah, as I was talk, mentioning, this, there's these two cables. An X, what does it say? X motor cable? Switch cable and motor cable. Presumably they're like spares in case you damage a cable. Because unless it plugs into the Wi-Fi connector, or that one there which isn't labelled, I have no idea where it goes. We'll leave them in the box for now. Right, I'm going to get this base attached back onto the printer. I think it doesn't matter which way up it goes. Where's my screws? Entertain yourselves for a few minutes while I put this back together. <laughs> Uh, comments, comments, comments. Oh, here's a good question. The Prusa Mini. Prusa Mini. The goddamn Prusa Mini. For reference, I have purchased one. mainly to do a review on it. I think it's going to be an interesting machine, whether good or bad, I think it will be interesting. Who else has uh, decided to take the leap? I mean, I suppose it's not a very big leap at 350 US dollars. I think it was still like 350 pounds, but what are you gonna do? I need things to review, eh? So until I'm gonna get given them, I have to buy them. It does look interesting though. Print area is pretty small, but I think it's bigger than this, so. The, uh, the one thing that I'm particularly looking out for in that Prusa Mini is its ability to be sat in a hot-ish enclosure and continue printing and how that affects performance and all that sort of stuff. Because, I mean, they've mentioned obviously more than once that it's good for schools and printer farms. Now, I suppose that's a slightly weird combination for those two, because for schools you'd want maybe enclosure and safety and filters and all that kind of stuff, whereas for a print farm you can have all that stuff separate. But I want to be able to put one in a really warm box, because the power supply is separate, and uh, get it to print ABS.
or ASA, more likely ASA. I don't think I have, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I don't think I have much ASA, uh, ABS. Well, that's a bit noisy now. One thing I am concerned a little bit with this is vibration. That's gonna be one thing that might let it down a bit. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see when we get it on. I am just about to do that, so hold on two minutes and we'll be getting it powered on and starting a print. It does come with stuff on the micro SD card, so we should be able to get going pretty quick here. Uh, the power supply is 200 watts, 24 volts. So fairly low on the wattage side of things, but I think that's probably gonna be 35 or something for the hot end and the remainder for the motors. Well, it's probably gonna be 40 watts for the motors and then the rest for the heated bed. I think it's good that it's 24 volts. So that's always nice to see. Uh, oh dear. Uh. Let's get this filament out of the way. Seeing as it comes with some filament, I'm going to use what's included uh, just because I think that's a good way to test it initially. Ooh, Pushing Mini Pro 32 bit price. Oh, Pro 32 bit price, cons, cantilever design, U box. Cantilever design is an, what I would call an interesting one. <laughs> I'm going to be very interested. What the hell is that? Oh, that's going to be the... Did I show you the whole filament bed thing at the top? Extruder arrangement? I don't think I did. Uh, let's give you a little look around that. In fact, we're going to have some time when it's heating up. So let's get it doing that first. I think I'm gonna uh, rotate it around this way for that. Oops, a daisy. Really wish I had a bigger desk. Oh, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed, Sapphire Pro coming soon. So we'll maybe do a live stream next week about that or the week after. Pretty keen, that just arrived today. So that'll be coming at some point. That's gonna be like a, another enclosure, but modded this time. This is really annoying me. It doesn't quite, I mean, it just catches, I think, the, where I hit it earlier. I think if I just loosen the screws and retighten them with it in position, then it won't catch when it shuts. But anyway, I'm just mumbling now. Power, I need power. Where's power? Always under the desk. That was also my thought about the uh, cantilever design. Yes, it's not ideal for larger prints, obviously, because of the uh, movement, but for eight mil rods with 10 mil vertical ones, and it's only like 150 mil build volume, isn't it? So, hmm, I think, well, I'm gonna be, if it does print equal quality to the Mark III, which I imagine it will, I can't see them having like garbage print quality because surely they wouldn't release a printer if it was. They know how to do good print quality, so why do anything but that? Okie dokie, let's get... Let's just make sure... I really want to set this to 1080p. I'm gonna... If the stream drops out here, it's because I'm switching this camera to 1080p. So, if it does, Give me like 30 seconds, a minute, and I will be back. If it does drop out, hopefully it will be fine. Uh, let's just try and set this camera to 1920 by 1080. Give me just a second. Ooh, CRT logo in the background. Does that still, oh, the camera's died now. Oh no. Oh God, this is, <laughs> I knew this would happen. Uh, 
I have just, I might have just killed my camera a little bit. It's done that thing where it just starts flashing and doesn't work. Um, right. I am still here. I'm just trying to fix this silly camera which has decided to die. Come on, camera. Come on. Hmm. Oh, is that one gone as well? Hello? The cameras have both died. This is not good. Uh, apologies everyone for the total disruption to the stream. Uh, I can't see any movement on my screen. Okay, how have we got it back? And we're back. Okay, so we're still garbage quality, sorry about that, but at least we're moving again now. Ah, right. So, I think we're just about in time to, oh, you can't see the switch. It's just down here, just down, yeah. So, whoa, that's not exactly quiet. <laughs> It has lights though. It's my first printer with lights. Anyway, right. So, does it, uh, mini operation, duh, 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 duh. so let's get this filament out and we've got to do the micro SD card. So today just printing in PLA, this is the PLA that came with it for those that weren't here at the time. This is just a natural white kind of PLA, nothing special, there's no name brand or anything. It's only a 500 kilo spool, 500 kilo, 500 gram spool. Wow, this is getting annoyingly loud very quickly. The, the screen is a lot smaller than your standard kind of, uh, you know that big, I think the technical term is like big webcap discount graphics display. I think you all know the one, the kind of big one with the dial. It looks a bit like that layout. So almost certainly running Marlin. It looks exactly like Marlin. Uh, but the, 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 like the notches on the knob don't correspond to bits on the screen. So their firmware could obviously do with a little bit of work. So, I mean, that's only a minor thing, but we'll see how we go. So... For reference, there is an internal spool holder. Ooh, don't need this on the desk anymore. Uh, yeah, there is an internal spool holder, if I can find the box. 
but it looks like it's only be, only going to be good for spools that are this wide, which is really not very wide. I mean, yeah, it's it's tweeny. For reference, oh, if I can get it over here, this is a rigid ink spool. Rest in peace. Uh, and this is this wide. This is this wide. So. I think this is a kind of normal width spool, really, and this is not as wide as that. Let's get that up out of the way. Thank you for mentioning it, 3D Gusner. Why not like now if you're here and you like what you see? <laughs> I'm really bad at that. Yeah, if you want to. If you're interested in 3D printing content you've not seen the channel before, by all means, subscribe. So this is SD card. It's actually a SanDisk branded SD card. It's nothing particularly high performance, but at least it's a branded one. That's kind of nice, I suppose. Ooh, that. I probably shouldn't have put it in and out so many times, but that made a really weird sound. Uh, that goes in there. I shot up to 24 likes now. And 62 views. That's weird. Anyway. Uh, I'm looking for some uh, can anyone see them because I can't my side cutters that I had here we go just so I can feed the filament through that's a good question actually aha so this does actually have uh, let's go back to here so I can talk to you for just a moment it looks weird what a strange angle so it does have filament detection. So the filament actually runs, uh, you'll probably see when we go back to the other angle, but it runs like up the back of the printer, out the top. There's this tube here, it kind of slightly sticks out, and then there's a, just an opening in the top here. So it's a really kind of weird arrangement where the filament is going to have to come up basically around the back and then across the top and then down into the uh, extruder all being pulled from the extruder. It is a direct drive printer. So let's see if we can get this in here without losing control of the end. Uh, I'm going to do that again so you can see from another angle. Right, let's do again from this other angle. Let's just rotate it a touch. So, that's in there. Not sure how, sorry. My arm is probably totally in the way. This is not easy. Blimey. Ah, I've lost the end. What a buffoon. So I'm going to give this as a probably negative already. It does have a filament sensor, but... Lord knows how you actually get something into it. So it's right up here at the back. No idea where the bleeding hole is. I haven't the foggiest how I'm going to get filament in there. Not the faintest idea. Um, is there anything in the guide? So I'm going to have to fiddle with the camera.
It's just like, just do it. Just put it in and just do it. Okay, sure. I mean, maybe I'm disadvantaged because I'm trying to... I have literally no idea where this is supposed to go in. Think I've got it. Think I've got it. Yeah, buddy. Right. Yes, it was right below the... Well, it's not a bowden tube, it's a feed tube, but... Yeah, it was right below, but I'm obviously looking from above rather than in here, so I can't really see that bottom under the hole very easily. Right. So... Press the extruder handle, I means the, the idler tension, then insert the filament into the hole to about a depth of four centimeters. Blimmin' Nora, how precise do you need to be to stick it in the old man? Right. Blimey, 70 viewers. Uh, most popular live stream ever. Right. So now let's come to this screen down here. Sorry, it's a bit squiff, but... Oh, it's, I'm also around the wrong side. So, let's just close the door. So... Filament in. What? Open the control panel, then choose the filament in options. Wait for the filament to finish loading. So the first thing it did was home to X180, Y150, Z165. So yes, the Z is definitely going to be 150 max, which is weird considering it's now at 165. So yeah. Uh, it's heating the nozzle to 200C, which seems like a sensible preheat temperature for PLA. That is heating really quite quickly actually. Don't know what kind of wattage that heater is, but that's going up. Pretty sharpish. Level bed, door open check, set filament check, set Z off there. I mean, there's quite a few kind of features in here. I believe they have the kind of, uh, you know, that thing that, was it, did Prusa introduce it? I don't know if they introduced it, but they uh, definitely have it, which is the, the kind of little Z offset, baby stepping Z feature, that thing. This is on that printer, this is on this printer, so that's a thing. I guess that's good. It's not always nice to have features that help with levelling and stuff, because I really can't be bothered with manual levelling anymore. <laughs> there's, there's so many options for automatic levelling that doing it manually just not superbly interesting. So use the filament runner sensor if you run out mid print and then just cannot change the spool as the bed is in the way. Uh, well, you can't be. Uh, yeah, I, I think you'd manage. So you probably noticed the hook that the filament goes onto. That's not actually screwed in. 
So you could move the whole filament either below or above the print bed probably. Uh, yeah, my, it, it probably would be quite difficult. Oh, it seems to have done a thing. Sorry, you missed that because I wasn't paying enough attention. Yeah, it did heat pretty fast. Sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Close up. It seems to have reordered my... Oh, there we go. What well, you can see is reflection. So that filament's obviously come out the nozzle now. That's all lovely. I'm really going to be interested to see how this does straight out the box because I think it's going to jump straight into a print. So we've done the filament in. Now go back to the main menu then select the print from SD option. Locate and select one of the g-code files on the micro SD card to start your first print. So we've got the Doraemon, the bathtub boat, the ring or the lucky cat. So I had a look at their files before, I sort of cheated, so they had them online, so I found that. So I'm gonna go for the ring because I know it's nice and small, so hopefully it won't take too long. That bed is moving mighty quick. There seems to be some plastic lodged around the... Uh... That's like... <laughs> Blooming hell. Did everybody else hear that? See that? That made one hell of a racket, didn't it? Uh, the white uh, bit on the bed is um, masking tape, which is the bed surface. Well, I'm going to guess that's not intended. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So uh, that went well, guys. Yeah, that's perfect ring. It's come out just like it's still oozing filament. The heating's done. Excellent. Has it cracked itself? Is it died? Is it? There's no tension in the belt at all. Okay, so that's what happened there. Right, the tension's all gone out of everything, it's not doing anything. It's going to be quite hard for me to show you exactly what happened there, but let me give it a shot. Uh, I'm just going to turn this off.
<laughs> okay, so. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that was meant to happen. <laughs> all, all, after all what I said, like trying to get a printer with better quality that's well set up and just great. Like the first thing that happens is it shakes the earth. So. Uh, Mm, how am I going to do this? So, let me try and explain by putting the camera up here to begin with. It's going to be a little bit freehand, so sorry about that, but let me show you what happened. So, up here you have one limit switch here. As you can see right at the back there, behind the filament. There's also another one here. So, initially it homed to the back which seems to be just fine. Regardless of where that carriage is, that homes to the back as it's meant to. However, what it next did to start the print was move all the way to the front, like that. So there's no end stop there, that's just the limit of the motion. Once it had moved to the front, it then moved all the way across. And because it was right at the limit of the motion, that was hot, because it was right at the limit of the motion, it hit a metallic piece that was not the end stop. If I move it back slightly, it hits the end stop. But if it's not, it hits that piece of metal. Now that piece of metal is going to be difficult to show you. Let me give it a go. It's right up in there. Here you go. This here. So this is a shaft for this bearing here. Now, I don't know if it's come out or if it's just really, really long. My guess is it's really, really long and they needed to reach some production schedule so they went with longer ones because they would, could get them in time and that sort of thing. And I thought, okay, well, it's outside the print area so it'll make no difference. But it turns out it made a difference. Right, again, apologies for the shaky camera. So that's what happened there. Yep, there are LEDs in there, nice. In LEDs in here too. So the question is, how does one go about be honest I'm really surprised that this happened but there you go these things do happen I suppose Oops. Um, I guess we can just try again and see if it'll do the same I think the homing maneuver is just a little bit not right it does sound a little bit like a jet engine starting up This time I'm going to try and position this camera right down here and we'll see if we can take a look right up at it as it happens, if it does happen exactly the same as last time. It's going to be quite difficult to get that angle. It's also going to be pointing directly into the lights. Sorry, did it again. Oh, yes. I'm good. Okay. Okay, so let's just give this another bash. Print from the SD card. Ring. It's going down. Why is it going down? I thought it homed upwards. Oh no, the limit switch is at the bottom. So that homes fine in that direction, and then homes fine in that direction. And then comes up to the top, and that comes out there. Yeah. 
this whole auto leveling is not seem to be working quite how it's meant to be. Now I did pressing the shaft in, but I think it's in as far as it can go. I think what it just tried to do was some leveling, but I don't know. I'm just going to leave it for a minute. It didn't obviously hit that same point this time, so. It may well be that I need to adjust something manually. This is absolutely true, but it doesn't say that in the instructions. So, as always with... <laughs> what the actual? days ah, that was just too good <laughs> just, no more uh, this was a new printer I believe it did seem new from the packaging that's for sure it doesn't look used so right G-code def definitely needs some work. Let's see if we can try some of the other features. Auto home. How hard could it be, right? So the home for Z is down, which is not wrong, I suppose. So that's it, auto home. It homes to that position. I think they've probably got their, like their home and coordinate system all messed up on the sliced models. Move axis. Move one millimeter. X. Yeah, so it homes to max. That's strange. So this time, this time I've homed it. What I just did, so I homed it and moved the X to max and back, and that was fine. I then moved the Y all the way to the maximum, thinking it would hit that axis at like a few millimeters left to go, but it didn't. There's nothing going close to it, the axis, the shaft that was sticking out that I thought it hit before. So it looks like the axes are going in the right direction. It's homing to maximum, which is not really, in, it's not incorrect. Um, almost certainly what's sliced is incorrect though. Um, so in control, let's try leveling the bed. What's the worst that could happen? Actually, before we do that, I just want to actually have a look at this removable bed. My God, this printer's loud. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to keep pressing that. I don't know how this fell down. I don't know how it's so wonky. Oh, that's the wrong way. Okay. So this bed is supposedly removable. Oh! That is one heavy bed. So there's magnets by the looks of it in the corner. Aluminium bed. It's actually reasonably, it's not perfectly rigid, but it's pretty rigid. Well, 
nice. All right, let's try and reduce that noise a little bit. So let's go ahead and try and level the bed. Good night, 3D Gusner. Thank you for joining us. See you again soon. So this is the level bed operation. What I'm presuming it's going to do is move up and do a kind of bit of points around the bed. Spin right back nut. What? Oh, so there's like some manual leveling as well. How much does it want me to spin it, for God's sake? Right, this is totally backwards. Where's the uh, bigger instructions? Screen, prepare, main menu. Any further instructions perhaps on how to use that bed leveling feature because right now all it's doing is being annoying. Um, main menu, tune, control, print, stop, control, prepare, cancel, move axis, do, 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 control, main, level bed. Starts the bed leveling process. Okay, how does the bed leveling process work? Getting started, open the box and remove the printer from the plastic foam, protective foam, set it on a flat surface, use a pair of scissors, use an cage to remove the scissors. Remove the SD card from the accessory box, insert it into the cloud, remove the AC power cord, plug in one end, then plug the other end, remove the filament holder from the box, install it, then install the filament. Press extruder handle, then insert the filament, open the control men, menu, select filament in. Go to the main menu, select print SD, select one of the GCO files to start your first print. Nope. Cleaning the nozzle, clearing a block nozzle, placing the tape, optical shaft and screw rod maintenance. I think it means lead screw by optical shaft. Cleaning the feed gear, unplug the cable connector, the nozzle. Well, interesting.
Why doesn't it balance properly for this area? I think it's because this is so dark. If we made this brighter, then you can see the bit at the top. Handy. So, this is a weird whole process. As far as I can tell, the, the Z end stop is in totally the wrong position because the nozzle is so far from the bed. It's actually ridiculous. Like, there's no way that that would even... There's no way that that nozzle would get to the bed because the bearings at the back would hit the top. So no matter what you do, it literally cannot function. And the plate level is complete somehow. What's the point in auto leveling if it doesn't use it? F-150S. Anybody know what an F-150S is? Because that message has just come up as an F-150S. So presumably that's the model number of the original printer this is based on. This is getting weird. Right. Control. Machine. F-150S. Set Z offset. Okay, so you can set a Z offset. We do. We do. There we go. We do. F one fifty S review. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost exactly the same. So I did just try the uh, the manual level. I undid the screw as far as it would go, but the spring is so short that it basically makes no difference because it can't push the bed up any higher. The inductive sensor is probably not inductive. It's probably capacitive given that this is glass. It's probably not going to be sensing the steel on the other side. It's quite thick. That also looks like filament. It's 
really nice glass bed. I don't know why they put horrible tape on it. I guess the next move is to maybe stick something in that gap to try and raise it up a little bit. Question is, do I have anything that's going to be suitable? So, making a right meal of this. Got some uh, magnets. They're only, ooh, they're very strong and not very thick. Not sure to be honest. Oh, there's a magnet missing. So there's a magnet missing out of that back corner. Don't know where that's gone, but that's not stuck on the bed. If I do this, it's going to be very difficult to remove again. I think. Yep, definitely a steel frame. Right. The weird thing is, I'm pretty sure the... Hello, Pete. I can't lower the sensor. The sensor's already basically at the same height as the nozzle. Obviously, if the sensor comes below the nozzle, then the nozzle can't get to the bed. For our own safety, I'm going to close the door. I think it did it. I think it's doing a thing. The nozzle's going to be absolutely acres away from the bed, but... What do you mean, no wonder they wouldn't send me one for review? They didn't even bother who it was. They just said they're not going to send anything re for review. That's just the policy that Monoprice UK has. Which seems pretty sad, but whatever. It's doing a thing. It's printing a thing. It's printing a thing. It's printing a thing. Rejoice, for it is printing a thing. 
I don't want to open the door because I don't know if that silly setting's on to turn everything off. You guys in your language I have to approve every comment you send me. <laughs> this is actually pretty quick. It seems quieter as well now. I must say, actually, given all those absolute rubbish problems we've had, the motion is actually quite quiet. The fans are really loud, but the motion's pretty smooth. This might sound un unexpected, but I am actually quite impressed. The bed is rock solid. The first layer, well, uh, it's a raft, so. But after raising that bed out, it's like that's absolutely night and day difference. Uh, so. Because it's printing PLA, the bed is not heating. Obviously that gap where I put the magnets to space the bed off, totally useless solution, long term, because it's just not gonna work. There's an air gap between it, so any heat conductivity is just gonna be absolutely shot. It will be very little heat conductivity between the heater and the actual bed. But for PLA, kind of acceptable-ish. Uh, obviously, to get it as a properly like decent heated enclosure printer, that will need sorting. But I don't think that's really, okay, it's the fault with the printer, what it's, uh, the solution is not to put magnets under the bed as a permanent solution. It's great for now because we are gonna be, because we can get something printed. I'm now talking a lot quicker than I would normally. Having the magnets there helps us print now because we can just get that extra bit of Z height that we needed to get it working. For a longer term solution, I'd either want to check in the firmware to see what's going on there, check with the G code that it tried initially to see what's going on there, and also just to adjust maybe that bottom Z end stop and move it maybe up a little bit or change what it's homing to or something like that, just to see if we can get that extra motion that it needs. Uh, we can move the view up to the top window. You can't see much from up there. Yeah, so this piece of ribbon cable, personally, I don't find ribbon cable an acceptable solution for this. I'm pretty sure this is not the intended use of ribbon cable. They're not designed for dynamic systems. They're just meant for static systems. So sorry for the total wobbliness. While it's really well securely held in, I don't think cables like this are designed for this amount of flexing. Maybe they are. Maybe that's something that I just don't know about. But personally not my favorite it does allow for very quick motion it is moving pretty sharp
See if I can get you. Oh, I think it's done already. Don't you just love rigid beds? So it's on here. It. Now we're going to get it off of here. Get it off. Should come with a spatula, apparently. Blimey, Charlie. Check that beast out. That's been filed within an inch of its life. That is a... That is a weapon. Wow, that's ruined the... Uh, bed surface. That's got lots of gaps. It's even, yeah, okay, so I think it's mostly print settings issues. Don't know how easily we're going to be able to see this. Let's go I'm going to bring it over to the other camera and see if we can hold it up close to that because it's slightly higher resolution. I mean, it records in 4K, but I'm only doing it in 1080p. Let's see if we can. Is that helping? I don't think it is. Uh, you can't really see print quality. It's all just white, isn't it? Uh, it's quite difficult to tell what's really good at this size. It doesn't seem bad, but it's also not particularly complex. Now I've got myself, ow. <laughs> Some loose bits of filament. So, got a bit more time. This, uh, I mean, it's absolutely ruined the surface. I've never actually used tape as a surface, ever. For good reason, look at it. Uh, what's, let's just try glass, shall we? Look how nice that is. It's all like nice black. I think for doing stuff really hot, glass is generally best anyway. Uh, for cameras, uh, I got a GH5 recently, which can then do um, output over HDMI. The problem I have, uh, it's quite nice, not bad in black. Uh, the problem I've had up to now is my Canon 750D, which is not a particularly great video camera, which I've used for all my videos, has no HDMI output. So it's quite limiting in that way, whereas 
GH5 can do HDMI output, so we'll hopefully have a better camera for stream, and then hopefully I'll work on some better secondary cameras as well. How much more professional does that look as a surface? Like, So this one, I just seen that comment from uh, Nerd Girls 3D Printing. Uh, I don't know what the temperature is right now. It's 95, so I can't really touch it. But the the nozzle is apparently the whole hot end. It's apparently really easy to remove. It's one of the like listed features. So. Feature list includes internal lighting, automatic bed levelling, uh, heated removable glass bed, filament detection, fully enclosed, door safety switch, and quick release nozzle design. But I did actually look online and there's no spares or anything, so that was a little bit weird. Uh, right. I think we're just gonna go ahead I'm going to print another ring, just because I don't have loads of time left. Um, I'm going to crank the speed up a bit and see what that does in terms of print quality, stuff like that. It does look so much more swish with a black bed though, it just looks professional, I mean, if that's a thing. It's a bit weird that it uses a raft. I mean, it's PLA for goodness sake, and it's tiny. I suppose for printing onto uh, a rigid bed, rafts are a bit better, just because you have something sacrificial that you can destroy. Goodbye, Florian. Thank you for joining us. Hope you had a good time. Don't forget to leave a like before you go, and anyone else who hasn't liked yet. We've got 30 likes, 50 con concurrent viewers. Don't know how many viewers total. 868, maybe? I hope I've not had any super chats because I've not checked any of them. No. Right, so I'm in the way to... So that's now 150% speed. It's really actually, that motion system is actually pretty tidy. It ain't nothing glorious, but for the price, oh, and it's all just come off the bed. <laughs> I 
Well, there you go. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. Whoa, that is a lot of cooling, though. That is a lot of cooling. That's just that is impressive, actually. I mean, that's a really significant draft. But then I suppose it makes loads of noise as well. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, so this print surface is now glass. It did have sticky tape on it. I'll probably put like flexible spring steel, hopefully at some point, because why would I use anything else? Um, maybe PII or a Prusa sheet or something on there. Uh, ba -ba -ba, what was I going to do? Oh, check the motion system. So this is... It's definitely not Core XY. It's, it's like really bug standard, nothing special. So there's, there's a motor on the X carriage over there. You can see it. Block there, and that does the motion along X. That one in the back there does motion along both sides. So there's a connecting rod right up in the top that does uh, basically connects the belt on that side to the belt on this side. I wouldn't say Ultimaker style because they have like those cross rods, don't they? They go like across the middle. So it's not quite like that, but it's like really standard cast easier. One motor for X, one motor for Y. X axis motor is on the Y axis, moves along the Y axis. It's blowing an absolute gale though, so. <sighs> right, so we've not got to try the heated bed at all. Maybe I'll do that now. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I don't know where that extra bed magnet's gone. It's just disappeared. Out of there. I know what I need to test. So, being that we can be pretty sure this is uh, Marlin firmware, we need to check what's on this micro SD card because we should on here have the Marlin firmware for the printer. We have a micro SD card reader, which is janky as hell. It's literally a PCB in a plastic case and it comes apart like that. <laughs> There you go, everyone. There's, <laughs> oh, I oh, missed it on the camera. Let me put it back together and I'll show you. So this is the uh, SD card reader. It's basically some card reading interfaces on this side and some more card reading interfaces on that side. The micro SD card probably fits in this, this one. Just about fits in that one. Yeah, that's definitely the micro SD one. It's so janky though. This is the most chintziest cheap one I've ever seen. So it all comes in this really cheap looking plastic case. It just assembles kind of like that. And that probably goes in that way round. Or is it the other way round? That way round. That goes on there. And then it's all held together by the USB terminal which goes on there like that. Hopefully, I've, oh, bugger, have I broken it? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I think it goes that way around. There we go. 
put that random plastic at the end. Let's get this in here. And let's see what's going on on the SD card. The, the Z end stop doesn't look like it will move. Yeah, there's no adjustability. It's just literally, there's two holes in the back and it's literally just bolted to the back case. So, I mean, It, yeah, there's there's no way to move that that end stop. Uh, before you test the heating tub, hang on. Do, 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 do. I mean, Cartesian is just. The fact that it uses X, Y, and Z axes. So HBOT, Core XY, Prusa style, they're all Cartesian machines. Because they all use independent, well, they all use an X, Y, and Z axis. Even Core XY is a Cartesian machine. It's just the way it travels around the Cartesian system is different. The printers that are not are things like SCARA and Deltas. So I think Scara uses polar coordinate system, I think. Uh, presumably Delta does as well, which is typically circular. So with Cartesian, you can determine your, like, your vector or your point with numbers that go like along this way and then up that way and then depth of that. Whereas with a polar coordinate system, you have an angle, so a rotation around and then a distance out. So just it's just the way they're all in 3D space. It's just the way you determine what that point is. Uh, no, it doesn't. It just so the actual like bed carriage at the back, the, like the sheet metal, it just touches the side of the sheet metal. There's no like adjustable screw or anything. Uh, I've forgotten what I was going to do. Oh yes, what's on the SD card? Let me have a look. Uh, I think I might have broken that SD card reader. I'm just going to be back in a second because I'm going to go get a proper SD card reader that I know works. Uh, I won't be too long, literally 30 seconds. Okay, so SD card reader, that actually works. Here we go, there's very little on here. So, uh, do I have a decent method for sharing this? Let's try. Uh, So this is what's on here. Uh, I don't think you can hear me, can you? Uh, 
Is that a bit better? Can you see that? I think you can probably see that. So that's the lucky cap G code, the Raymond, the door Raymond, whatever that is. Uh, guides in different languages that looks like Spanish, Italian, and French. Is it? I think Rapido got an O on the end. <laughs> it's probably Italian. Rapida, that looks like Spanish and that looks like French. And then of course English. Ring, uh, one long word with the word start in the middle, that's got to be German. <laughs> uh, then you've got Cura, WeBuilder. So no, no firmware. So that looks like to me another company which has not met the open source agreement by Marlin. Because I'm almost 100% certain that that is Marlin firmware. Oh, so I was wrong with my languages for Italian. Okay, well, either way, it comes in multiple languages. Right, so, I mean, people are dropping off now, so I think it's probably time to call it a day. I'm pretty exhausted. It's 10 o'clock, so we've been going for two hours, which I think is not too bad. Uh, we got this weird angle, feel like you're miles away, but there you go. It was necessary when the box was absolutely enormous. Oh, these magnets are, they literally just like rip through the plastic. So, yeah. That's going to be it for today. Unless anyone has any quick questions, I'll sit here for a couple of minutes and wait for any questions that you might have. But other than that, I think that's a fairly decent first investigation. We did get a print out of it in the end, despite the uh, shaking the earth in the meantime. Not quite what I would have expected, but it's difficult to check print quality really on something so small, but oh, there looks like there's some like Z banding. It's just so small that it's difficult to inspect. Or oh, my more more right. I don't know how you pronounce it. More right effect. A firmware. Uh, the firmware update, I believe, is one point six, which I think is what was already on the printer. It was the, the firmware update is just the same uh, Mare, is that? I don't know. I know the word, I just don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, when I checked, I'm pretty sure the version on the website is 1.6 and that's the same that we have here. Wow, it's loud. Definitely some potential firmware adjustments to be made. Yeah, so heck, I'm pretty sure a hex file is not compatible with the open source agreement. You have to provide the source code. Uh, prepare, is it? Firmware version or 1.6. So, unless. It's difficult to know if I'd recommend it yet. Yeah, I mean, it's, as it stands right now, I wouldn't recommend it, but it depends a little bit for me on how well everything else works. One thing being broken out of the box, like not working out of the box is not good. Like that's really, really not good. But if I can find a very simple solution to that problem and everything else works exactly as it's meant to, then for 400 pounds, maybe still viable. We'll, we'll have to see. See how I feel about everything else. Does it feel like good value for money? Are there enough features there to justify the price? I don't know. 
I'll be doing some testing. I will probably publish a review, maybe even if it's a short one. Yeah, I would think I'll publish a review in a little while. It'll probably be quite a little while out, but. Moi, moire, 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 moi. Oh, moi. Is it just moi? But there's no ray at the end, it's just moi. Well, you learn something new every day, eh? Oh, and the, uh, the SD card reader doesn't work. I got it. No. Yeah. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. It's been a quite a good evening, I think. A little bit entertaining, especially with the camera just go. <laughs> just the level of disappointment in the camera, but yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how this has gone. I mean, it was entertaining, if nothing else. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. There are going to be more videos coming up on Extrudinator. I've got quite a few things planned for that, although everything's just taking a lot longer than planned, so that's why they're delayed. Uh, not going to tease too many other projects. There's like a speaker thing coming, and there's a custom control board thing coming. Soft... Um, Next stream will probably be Sapphire Pro. I don't think that'll be this week, but maybe uh, next week, maybe next Wednesday, if I can hold out for that long. Maybe the weekend. I really want to get it out of the box. That's the thing. I, I only get one chance to do a live stream of unboxing and building it, but I want to do it literally like now. I can't do it now. I'm absolutely shattered, but I want that to happen sooner rather than later. So yeah, plenty of stuff's coming, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see that. It will be entertaining probably cool oh and elegu mars review is going to be coming hopefully soon as well it's all written i just haven't had time to record it right good stuff thank you everyone for joining and i shall see you in the next one goodbye